Hi, my name is Andres Pineda, and I'm very excited to be here. Welcome to my session. Today, we're going to be talking about how could we deploy uh, Uno Platform Web Applications into Azure. When I say Uno Platform Web App, what do it really mean? And why is Uno Platform Web Applications different from any other web applications? Well, when we use Uno to compile web applications, we are, uh, in fact, compiling into WebAssembly. In case you haven't heard of, WebAssembly is this new technology that allows, in theory, taking any language and compiling into this intermediate pseudocode that will run uh, natively on the browser. This removes, this removes the necessity of a web server, and it makes the perfect fit uh, for uh, Azure Static Web Apps. Azure Static Web Apps is a service that allows hosting a static content on Azure by connecting a core repository like GitHub or Azure DevOps, and it will automatically build and deploy your applications based on, based on code change. The main benefits of Static Web Apps are that it provides a, the, the, the easy way to use a custom domain, uh, TSL, built-in TSL certificate and free, uh, built-in authentication and routing. Let's jump into the code so you have an idea of what we're going to be shipping. Here we have a uh, Uno application that we created by using the command line or the terminal, the command line um, template. Basically, we just .NET, .NET new Uno application and provided the required information. For this sample, we're going to be using Visual Studio uh, 2022. But you could also use Visual Studio Code if you if you need if you want. Let's run build and run the the application so you have an idea of what we're gonna be using. So this is as I mentioned a very simple application, and right now we are running the Windows project. Uh, if we do some small changes. automatically reflect this, those changes. Uh, but let's jump into Azure, to where, where is that most of the uh, work is going to be done. If you don't have an Azure account yet, I invite you to create one. Uh, you're going to be getting a 200 uh, credit that you will be able to use in your, next, in, your, in your first 30 days. As well, that subscription is going to allow you to use some services uh, for a whole year and other services for, for, for like forever. Uh, we are right now in the Azure Porter. And from here, if, if you want to create, uh, if you want to create a static web apps, we can just use the, the search from the home and, and just pick it from here. Here, we're going to create a new static web app. And we're gonna be filling some of the of the, the some of the information that is required. I'm gonna be guide, guiding you through. So we're gonna here is 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 very straightforward. Uh, the Azure team did a very good job making this as, as simple as possible. Uh, so in order to create a new a new research, we don't have to deal go into too many details. From here, we have to create a new resource group. A resource group is basically a way for us to group other resources that are going to have the same life cycle, the same permissions, and the same policies. Um, let's just create a new one, and uh, we're going to call it WinUI on the web. Call it RG for resource group. Uh, here we're gonna be using the research the name of the static web apps. This can be anything. Uh, this is not what is gonna be shown to the end user, but uh, I suggest you to keep this name close to the name of the project that you're gonna be uh, hosting here, so you don't get confused. Uh, so the plan for the plan type, and for this example, we're gonna be using the free for hobby personal projects, 
And for the actual function and staging details, we're going to be using East, Eastern US. We, for this sample, what we'll not use Azure functions, uh, but we will be showing uh, some part of the of the presentation part of uh, the staging part. So here is something very important: is is the source. It here you can select either GitHub or other. Uh, other means that you can use Azure DevOps or any other uh, source code repository that you're using. Let's in this example, I'm gonna be connecting my GitHub account. It will ask for the credentials. You authorize, you you sign in, and you confirm your password, and it will connect your GitHub account to your Azure. Um, here, it asks you three more information, and it is their organization. For this, you're going to pick the organization where your code repository is located. The repository that you want to be working with is WinUI on the web. And for the branch, you pick, make sure you pick the correct branch. This is very important as this is the branch that is going to be triggering the build and the deployment. You might want to use uh, another brand other than the main if, if you want to or if you want to keep the the latest changes that are in the main you 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 use the one build details this is you're going to select the type of application that you are going to be building uno platform is not currently on the list uh, so for this example we're going to be using custom all this, you leave it like this, and uh, we will come back. Uh, we'll, later, I'm going to show you what, what I'm going to be using for this. But for now, just keep it as it is. Preview and create. It's, at this time, there are two things happening. When we click on create, Azure is doing the initial deployment of our application. But at the same time, um, Azure did an initial configuration for the CI CD. If we go to the resource that was already created, we are going to be able to see the application that was just uh, deployed. But as well, we're going to be we're going to be able to see the the CI CD uh, the CI CD pipeline that was triggered by 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 Azure. Initially, if we go to as you can see, this is the repository that we're using. And if we go come to the code, we're going to see this new directory and this new file that Azure created for us. This file contains the initial configuration for the CI CD, which is actually a GitHub Actions. We are using GitHub uh, as our repository and GitHub Actions for our, for our CI CD. We will have to make some modifications to this file because uh, it, as mentioned before, uh, Azure still doesn't have the configuration for our Uno application. The, the configuration is very straightforward, and we're going to do it straight from the browser. Because of this nice feature that GitHub included, you just go back to the to the homepage and tap on the on the on the dot on the period. This will open uh, Visual Studio Code editor that we can use to do the modifications that we need to make it work. At this moment, Visual Studio, the online version of Visual Studio Code is loading our, our project and making sure we have everything we need in order to uh, for the project to work. But since we are going to be, we will only going to be modifying this file. Remember, the file is inside that GitHub directory and it will use uh, name that is basically the name that Azure uh, for the website that Azure use the URL that Azure use when deploy. Uh, as you can see, this is this is the actual website. It doesn't have anything. It is empty because we haven't done the initial deployment. Something I want to show you something else uh, before modifying the file. This fail, and uh, as I said. Uh, we knew it was going to fail because of uh, this configuration that we need to do here first. So I'm going to copy and paste everything. And then I'm going to, I'm going to be guiding you through the, the different fields that we added. This is a YAML file. And basically here we are adding a new step.
So he, ha he already had at one step and uh, the step that we are adding is that so we need of a way to tell uh, Azure uh, uh, GitHub Actions how to build and where to find the executable. So we are set up.net. This is the step that we are adding. Uh, we are using this actions, which is the, for the GitHub actions. We're using the .NET version 5.0. This will depend on the version that we you are actually that your project is actually supporting. This project that we are using supports .NET 5, but .NET 6 just got released. If you wanna migrate your project, if you wanna start using .NET 6 for your project, you can definitely use it. But just make sure that you're using the correct version here. Here we're just telling uh, the GitHub Actions to navigate to the project where the Watson head is. And also we are telling how to compile. Uh, something else that we need to do is telling uh, telling GitHub Actions where to find the, the final executable that's gonna be deployed. So right now the application source code path is pointing to path to the to to the root, but we're gonna be Till we're going to be modifying this with the correct information. And basically it is the Watson project binary releases .NET 5.0, which is going to depend on the, 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 the .NET version that, you, that you're supporting, that your application is running. In our case, this is uh, .NET 5 and the distribution directory. All we have to do now is save this directory and by using, without leaving the website, thanks to the... Uh, this nice feature that GitHub has, we can uh, commit this change, update, YAML for CI, and then we just commit. This will, there's no need to push. We are working astray on the, on the repository. Probably for our production application, I would, I would not advise you to do this, but instead create a pull request that you can then later merge. But since this is a sample, this is okay. By committing, we just trigger a new release. While this is compiling, I wanna show you a couple of things. On the website, uh, do you remember one of the benefits that I mentioned? So basically this is one of the benefits and it is the fact that you get for free uh, TSL certificates and it will renew uh, automatically. You don't have to, you don't have to configure and you don't have to come here later and, and do anything else. While this is compiling, I have a, I don't want you to wait until it is finished. So I'm gonna show you the final version of how it looks. And then we come back here. So we, we can see, we can see the final page. Did I mention that another benefit of the static web apps is the fact that our static content is globally distributed, uh, making it very close to your final users so that when uh, they access your application, your, the application is gonna load really fast. That's, and, 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 and that's a very good uh, feature for static web apps. Still building, but in the meantime, this is, this is the same project that I, I created a uh, side web apps previously, so we didn't we didn't have to wait for the CI CD and the deployment to finish. So here we have the actual, the final result. This is the project, the the same one that we have, but now running in Azure. Uh, if we come back and we say uh, we will we would like to modify to do some modifications, and then trigger a new. A new, a new pull, create a pull request and trigger a new build and see the changes happening. This is also possible to do. And by that, let's say that we would like to change the image that we're using here. And instead we want to use uh, this image that it's called, let's use this image. And so you have an idea of what are the modifications that I did. I'm just going to run the project locally again. Yes, well, in this case, I don't want to use any width. I want to keep it. Uh, so just this modification. And let's say that we want to chip this modification and see see it happening uh, on, on the CI CD. All we have to do is just 
is create a branch with the changes that we want to chip. Let's say that let's create a new branch and then update page. Update main page. We're going to commit these changes. Oh gosh. Update main page. And we're going to push it. Then we can create a pull request with this. And I want to, I want to show you something nice that happens when you do that. Actually this one. Yeah. So when we push a new version and uh, we create a pull request, the pull request, we create a staging version of our application that Azure allows us to go and see, uh, it deploys an, another version of our application that, that we can see. If we want to see it in action, we just go to the repository. Say if the one that we, that we triggered previously is finished. So we refresh and we'll come, we'll come, uh, but we, if we come to the repository and where is this repository? Yeah. And we hope we, we navigate to the actions. We see that we created, uh, the pull request that we created, we can see the logs of the pull request. Actually, we navigated to the, we want to see the logs of the bill. And we navigate to the logs. And if we go to the build and deploy, come on, Asher. At the very bottom, we see that Asher stated deployment completed. This is your website. You see that, that the name is the same URL, but it added the commit hash that was used for this build. And there we have the Azure, uh, the staging environment with the changes that, that, that we, for the pull request that we created before closing, I want to show you one last thing, and it is the, how we can configure, uh, custom domains. This is nice if you are playing around, but when we want to, when you want to, when you want to use your brand, you will want to use uh, a custom domain or the main that represents your brand. And for that, uh, I created, I got this domain that is, let me open a new tab. So we UI everywhere.com. Uh, oh, it's loading. And there we have, uh, our application that we hosted on using a side Azure static web apps using, uh, TSL certificates and also using a custom domain. I hope you like it. I hope you find useful this information and I invite you to go to the documentation, both for Azure static web apps and Uno, Uno application, Uno platform in case you have any, any doubts. Also, you can find me on the on the on the web on the thank you